because the biggest obstacles really has been really the uncertainty around, I suppose, initially dates uh, when we're going to reopen and then I suppose uncertainty around kind of guidelines uh, around reopening and what we could and couldn't do and what changes we had to, had to make. And, you know, there's still probably a little bit of vagueness around uh, around certain certain parts of it, I suppose, like initially when the guidelines came out, uh, they were supposed to come out on a certain date and that just kind of went on and on for a little bit. And then the dates for reopening came forward and uh, they almost met each other really, like, you know, that the, uh, the, the guidelines were quite late coming out uh, and the opening coming forward just put everybody under a lot of pressure, like to get, to get the reopening done uh, and within the, the, the recommendations. Um, so I suppose that was probably the most challenging part of it, like, you know, and so it's really knowing what to do, like in relation to kind of wearing masks, should, should we, our employees wear masks, should they not wear masks, do we need screens, do we not need screens, how much sanitizer do we need, where are we going to put it? Um, and I suppose, look, every, every, in terms of a hotel, every property is different like you know so we kind of had to make our own decisions on a, on a lot of areas there you know and take the guidance as as we got it and take advice from you know a kind of uh, we work with a third party health, health and safety company take a bit of advice from them and just kind of do walk the customer journey ourselves and just decide ourselves you know if you put yourself in the customer's shoes and if you were a customer coming in the whole thing about this reopening the hotel for us was about giving customers a sense of confidence that they were coming into a hotel they could feel safe uh, we didn't want it being like a hospital environment either like so we didn't want to go overboard uh, but we want to give give people a sense of reassurance that they were in a really safe place they could sit back relax and enjoy their their hotel stay not may, may not be quite the same as what hotels were prior to covid but you know, just really just give that sense of confidence and assurance and comfort that they, they were in a hotel that was going to look after them and take care of them, you know. So, um, yeah, I think really the uncertainty about things really was the biggest challenge. For ourselves, it is the, the Irish Hotel Federation, um, the Irish Hospitality Institute and, and of course, Falch Ireland as well. Uh, and then like kind of locally for us uh, and within our own company and um, first choice purchasing, purchasing were really kind of key in giving us advice in terms of uh, what suppliers to, to, they, they were working with and who we should go to for various items such as again the, the PPE was kind of a big area like you know it wasn't something that hotels would naturally carry a big stock of or really have a massive requirement for in the past but uh, all of a sudden it became a thing that we really needed and we needed lots of it you know so um, I think first choice purchasing for us were, were kind of really important to us in that regard. Um, in relation to kind of general hotel guidelines, what's happening in the industry and kind of recommendations as well as with the Irish Hotel Federation uh, were very important um, in terms of lobbying government and, and kind of again working on those guidelines with Falch Ireland. The Falch Ireland were key in terms of, uh, you know, recommending kind of training programs for our staff. There was a lot of um, they had really informative uh, uh, hub, COVID hub, as they called it on their website, where it gave you very uh, great deals of information in relation to anything to do with COVID and, and, and uh, every department from how to close down a hotel to how to reopen a hotel and everything in between as well. So that was really vital. Uh, and then I suppose the Irish Hospitality Institute would have been very important as well. Uh, um, we would have done a lot of webinars in the Irish Hospitality Institute and there, there was uh, various kind of coffee mornings, uh, virtual coffee mornings between various general managers from different properties around the country, which I found very informative in that there was a great uh, amount of kind of information sharing between different uh, different general managers and everybody's experience is slightly different, but everybody had the same problem, like they were closed and they had no customers and we needed to get reopened and we needed to do it safely. So I think, um, you know, having that kind of, I suppose, sharing of information in the industry was, was really important, like, you know, so yeah, I suppose they, they, they were, there was a number of different um, kind of sources, but they were the main ones, um, FCP, the the IHF, the IHI and Falch Ireland really very important. Most noticeable ones really I suppose when you come into the hotel, uh, obviously there's hand sanitising stations and a number of points around the hotel from the first door, front door right through to all these various departments, leisure centre, spa, restaurant. Um, in our food and beverage departments, our, all our employees are wearing face masks, um, Montanati branded face masks, which uh, were sourced through FCP. <laughs> um, but 
but uh, yeah, so our bar staff, our waiting staff, um, our back of house people are all wearing face masks, um, our advisors and uh, yeah, our accommodation staff as well like are, are wearing um, the face masks. Um, we introduced from the, the, the outset and it, it wasn't a thing that this was a kind of a, a, um, a directive, it was more so a recommendation which we took on board ourselves and we decided to do it, but that's in relation to taking temperature checks of our employees. Um, so every day when when somebody comes to work, their their temperature is checked um, just just after they've clocked in, and um, thankfully we've had no anomalies. And if if we had, we you know we've got a protocol there to, to kind of deal with that. And you know that 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 was kind of an important thing as well in terms of reassuring. I kind of spoke already about reassuring our customers, but the, there's a lot of reassurances that we had to put in place to to make sure that our staff kind of felt safe to be here as well you know so in other areas like our, our canteen in terms of size was a little bit small if we were going to fully comply with social distancing so like you know we've we've um, given up our, our, our kind of main function room in the hotel and turned that into the staff canteen so there's plenty of space there for the, the employees to social distance safely um, during their meal times uh, we restricted numbers on our locker our locker rooms and um, so they're you know you, it, there's no more than three people in the locker rooms at any one time so we've had to stagger the start times for a number of employees um yeah so in the leisure center then as well like we, we've had to introduce kind of time slots for for booking the gym uh, we've introduced time slots for booking the pool they're restricted four to five minutes windows uh, and um yeah so we've we've introduced kind of an online booking system there as well for our members so you're kind of dealing with members and hotel residents and i suppose there's a lot less options for your hotel residents at the moment to go to go out and about and explore various areas uh, and they, you just find that they spend they're spending much more time in the hotel and that the the, the leisure center particularly the swimming pool there's a huge demand for it uh, and um, we have to manage that very carefully because you know it, it is peak summer season at the moment we've got a huge amount of kids uh, families staying in house which is unusual for us like you know the Montanati would wouldn't ordinarily have that many, many families staying with us you know but uh, so we've we've had to to kind of i suppose adapt uh, to that as well and uh, it, it takes a lot of kind of I suppose management to ensure that there's no kind of um, uh, no disappointed families there that I can't get any time in the, in the pool because it's really important for them in terms of entertaining their, their children and all that you know but just in the leisure centre like we, we still haven't opened our jacuzzi we still haven't opened the sauna or the steam room they're seen as kind of confined spaces so you know the, the guidelines were that you know you don't use them for now but um so hopefully we'll get back to a situation where we can open up uh, fully, fully and down in the leisure centre as well. Yeah, so uh, that's just a few really. Like there, there's a lot of other kind of different bits. We like a huge amount of screens around. We've got screens on reception desk, screens on the bar counter, screens in between um, various booths inside in our restaurant as well. And uh, they're very visible. Like you know, they're they're quite nicely done. The Montanati logo on them as well. Uh, so they're they're done tastefully but they're very effective as well. Like in the customer can see that they're there and they're there to protect them as well as the employees. So, you know, that's, um, that's just a little, little bit of what we've done there. There is more, but uh, yeah, so they're probably the most noticeable changes that we've made. We were very proactive uh, on training, really, even during the lockdown, I suppose, I would have been in regular communication with the, the hotel team. Uh, we, we work with a, a UK-based company called Flow Hospitality, who provide uh, online training. So we've been working with them for about a year and a half now. So we've become very used to doing a lot of our training remotely and online and the whole lot, you know. So it was very easy to go out with a link to the training, to, to new training on that system for our employees, even during lockdown. And just recommended to them, like any training they hadn't done so far, that they, they got it completed in that, in that time frame. Um, and then I suppose Flow initially brought out two kind of modules that dealt purely with, with uh, how to manage COVID in the workplace and how to manage COVID at home. Um, and I think uh, the one about managing COVID at home is very good. Like there was a lot of really good recommendation there in terms of mental health and how difficult it can be in such a, a scenario and gave some really good kind of advice on how to, how to manage it um, effectively. And then uh, I suppose the closer we got to reopening and just before we reopened, there was a whole suite of um, training that was very much COVID related. It dealt with the various departments in the hotel and how to get the hotel back open safely. And um, we ensured that every employee before they re reopened, before they returned to work, that every employee who came back uh, couldn't actually come back in until they had completed that training online and got certified. As it transpired actually further down the road, like Falls Ireland were also working on developing their, their COVID-19 safety charter. Uh, and as it transpired, the, the company they used to develop that training was actually Flow Hospitality. So we had already done all that training as well. So 
we were one of the very first hotels that would have would have got accredited with the with the COVID uh, safety charter, which was great. It meant we didn't have to do it all over again as well, and it meant we were we were compliant from day one. And um, so we could probably display our certificate in the lobby and again put the stamp on our website that that we were we were approved in terms of uh, of having a really robust training program there in place for our staff that that dealt with COVID. So yeah, so a huge amount of training, like you know and. It wasn't just the COVID training that we focused on. There was a huge focus on just re just before reopening, but all the ways along during the lockdown, there was just little reminders, you know, dear customer service training, health and safety training, and so on. So yeah, there was there was there was a lot going on. But I suppose in, in the initial part pre-opening, it was really COVID training, and then when our employees did come back on their first day back at work, we ensured that we had department-specific induction lined up. There was all socially distanced with small numbers, and we did it inside our, our cinema room here in, in the Montserrati. We did a nice presentation for our employees, like, because they were coming back, they'd done all this training. It was a different world in different environment when they left to go off from when we shut down uh, than what it was when they were reopening. So they were, they were a bit kind of nervous about coming back as well. So we kind of had to explain to them there in, in the first few hours that they were back in the hotel, say, this, this is what your job now looks like. These are the little changes and tweaks we've made along the way. And this is what we're asking you to do when you come to work. And this is how, how, how you need to operate in terms of PPE, in terms of sanitation, in terms of like, you know, if it's accommodation assistant and cleaning the room, certain items had to be removed from all the rooms, such as the magazines that we would have inside there that would be high touch points for all the different guests. Say so a lot of them were removed. So people's jobs have changed a little bit um, and uh, I suppose it's become a little bit more complicated. So that all had to be spelled out kind of really kind of in detail with them. Uh, number one, so they knew what they were doing now. And again, number two, always go back to, you know, providing them with a sense of reassurance and confidence that these measures are there to protect them, the employees, as much as it is to protect the, um, to protect the customers coming in as well. So yeah, so lots, lots on training, lots on training. It's still going on every, every day, every week. We're, we're still kind of tweaking our training as well and providing it to the team. We have a really good kind of sales and marketing department who, who would have a, a database of uh, previous guests of the hotel. So uh, we would have kind of uh, contacted them with uh, newsletters and easings, but kind of more so in the lead up to reopening again, I suppose we would have gone out with newsletters. I think we, we went out quite early with, with kind of updates, um, particularly across our social media platforms. We would have been very active on those uh, even during the lockdown. Um, we came up with our call, call and collect afternoon tea concept as well during lockdown. Down. So um, you could you could get a Montanati pure cork themed afternoon tea, uh, and we were doing a five euro donation to uh, our hospital heroes charity for every afternoon tea that was ordered. So that was happening. We were serving that during the lockdown. Uh, it was call and collect, uh, and it just allowed us to have something like that. Just allowed us to go on social media platforms. We had something to talk about. There was something new there. There was something different, and um, so that kept kept us out there. And uh, yeah, we were working away on different offers for when we reopened. So we would go out with newsletters, and and uh, you know, one one offer we came up with was uh, the Green Fingers Getaway. So everybody during the lockdown got, kind of got into their gardening a lot. Uh, so there was a renewed interest nationwide on, on gardening. So uh, we have beautiful, fabulous gardens here at the Montanati, and we've got uh, we're lucky enough to have a head gardener in, in Anne Daly, who's uh, really knowledgeable and uh, very experienced. So we created a package that was kind of a. Um, included a, a tour of our gardens with, with Anne, the head gardener, and you could have a chat about the various plants and um, all the different kind of, uh, I suppose, areas of the garden, the history of it and what's growing there and and, uh, and why why that particular plant is growing there. So that that that's a, a package that would have got a lot of interest as well because it was a little bit different. So again, everything like that that we came up with, it, it allowed us to go out with um, allowed us to work with uh, just more communication really to our database and to our customers and potential customers as well across social media platforms. We, we also kind of just closer we got to reopening, we did a, a lovely refurbishment of our, our panorama terrace uh, overlooking the city here and uh, we, we did a kind of a launch of it on the opening day as well and um, lovely kind of imagery of it and again it was a focus on outdoor spaces and the outdoor area and the view of the city and the view of the gardens and um, we also, as well, just before reopening, we completed a, a refurbishment of the locker rooms in our leisure centre. So uh, there was it allowed us to go out to our our, um, our membership and uh, and uh, talk to our, our leisure centre members about some of the work we've done in in that part of the hotel as well. So 
I suppose the, the important thing was about having something to talk about and luckily we did and we created some stuff to talk about and then that allowed us to go out and, and I suppose interact with our, with our customers across various platforms. I suppose the biggest lesson we learned was that there was a serious pent up demand for, for staycations and for hotel breaks and just for people to get away. I suppose people had been in lockdown for uh, near on four months, I guess. And uh, they think, I think there was a sense of cabin fever probably at that stage. Um, and then I suppose the international travel was kind of taken out of the equation a little bit. So I think we're, we're, we're far busier uh, in the summer months, like July, August, far busier than what we expected we would be. Um, now I would say that with, with a word of caution that like September onwards is going to be a little bit quieter, but uh, going by the signs that we have, but certainly July and August, like the, the volume of bookings, the pace in which they came in, they came in at, it was something that we'd not seen before, you know, so um, again, we had to react to that. But yeah, I think um, there, there was a serious pen up demand there like you know and um look I, I i would think as well we did a lot of good things like what i spoke about there in terms of marketing at the hotel we would have done a lot of good things during the lockdown as well that would have generated a, a keen interest in, in in our particular hotel um and again having the, the outdoor spaces and and the, the fact that we communicated those were strong in our imagery strong strong in our communication i i think that that was a good learning as well like you know and i think book, booking patterns have changed uh, there's no doubt about it that booking patterns have changed. We're seeing a lot more bookings uh, on our own website coming through direct to the hotel as opposed to third parties. I'm not sure what that's telling us. Is that telling us that the international market, who, who would normally be traveling at the moment, are much more likely to book through a third party? Uh, but certainly the domestic market at the moment that we're seeing, they're, they're, they're coming direct, which is, which is a good thing as well. Do your homework in advance of reopening as best you can. I suppose anybody that's going to reopen in the next phase will have the benefit of ha already of having uh, hotels and restaurants and and pubs that serve food uh, open. So they have, a, they have plenty of contacts in the industry that they should just kind of tap into that and get a bit of advice on it. I think absolutely look at your guidelines that have been issued from Falls Ireland and uh, probably the Vintners really, I suppose, would be the one for the next phase. Uh, look at the guidelines that have been issued and use them as your blueprint and, and follow the guidelines as best you can. Um, certainly in terms of the kind of hand sanitizers and face coverings and all that, I think the, you really need to be doing the best you can to show that you're taking this seriously and that you're providing that, that safe environment for people to come to and that, that sense of confidence in, the, in the, your customers. Um, yeah, and I'd say, look, there's, I'd say as well that there will be learnings every day. Uh, once you get reopened from the first day right through. Um, we've been opened since 29th of June and we're kind of uh, in early August now. So and every day we're, we're sitting down having a chat as a team and kind of saying okay we need to tweak this or change that or whatever you know so um yeah i think every day there'll be learnings and uh, you need to be open to that as well i think initially i think face coverings and hand sanitizers are going to be with us for quite some time certainly the hand sanitizers even if the vaccine is developed for for covid we may be able to lose the masks and the screens but i think hand sanitizer is going to be some somewhat of a feature i think it's there's no harm in having it there either you know it's probably a good thing um i think that uh I, well I, I would hope that we'll this time next year will be a completely different place and that the same pent-up demand that we'd seen for for national for our own national travel this year will be will be replicated in international travel next year and we can start working on getting all, all our international visitors back back into into the country again for for holidays um hopefully the booking patterns won't change back and I hope the, the, the trend of direct bookings to hotels kind of gets even better. Um, I think that's for the benefit of the industry really, to be honest with you. And uh, yeah, I suppose the biggest thing that I'll change is just, is just that whole focus on cleanliness really, like, you know, and that uh, the cleaning standards inside in, in, in hotels is going to be something that's going to be have, to have to be front and center and that uh, hoteliers are going to have to ensure that they, they've, um, they have a bigger budget next year for, you know, you, potentially your accommodation department, certainly your public area cleaning is going to have to be a little bit more intensive than what it was pre-COVID. Uh, and, you know, we would have been very confident that our standards prior to, to COVID-19 were, were very, very high anyway in terms of uh, cleaning and that. But I think it just has to be more visible now. Like, again, going back to giving customers that sense that, look, they're in, they're in a, an establishment that really looks after their customers and that 
cleaning and hygiene is is uh, of the utmost importance to them. Like you know, and I think people will be tentative for quite a while in terms of going on international breaks and all that. But when they do come, like the worst thing you could do is not give that sense of reassurance to them that that you're you're uh, you're you're taking their safety and and health uh, seriously. So yeah, I think that's going to be the biggest change. It's going to be a certain. Um, uh, kind of expectation from from uh, your customers, both national and international, that you, you're going to provide a really safe, a really clean environment uh, for them, and they need to be able to see this happening, almost like a, a little bit of a show during this day. They, they they notice people cleaning, and they take note of the fact that people are sanitizing and the whole lot. And I think even if a, a, a vaccine was developed in the next two or three months and it was distributed widely, I still think that in five months' time we'll be looking at those levels of cleanliness and and sanitation as well.